in this session let's learn about oracle networking concepts oracle net services the oracle net services enable the network connection from the client to the database server to establish connection from the client to the database server we need some kind of a service running right yes that service is called as oracle net this oracle net service will be running both on the client machine and as well as the database server machine on the client machine this oracle net service is a background process running whereas on the database service this oracle net is a active service which has a process called oracle net listener this listener is responsible for coordinating the connections between the database and the external applications running from the client machine okay so whenever a user request a connection to a database service this process goes through the oracle net service goes through the network and at the database server there will be a listener this listener is a process running on behalf of the oracle net service as soon as the request comes from the client this listener takes a look at the request validates the request and if it is authorized then it establishes a connection between the client machine and the database server a single listener can really service multiple database instances running on the database server and also it can service thousands of client connections okay okay good the client can connect to the database server through the listener this listener needs to be running all the time in the database server so obviously the database administrator need to configure the listener once the listener is configured in the database server the client if it needs to connect to the database server the client needs to know the host where the listener is running it needs to know the port the listener is running the protocol the listener is using and the name of the service that the listener is handling okay we need this four properties in order to connect what are the four properties we need the host name we need the port number we need the protocol and we need the name of the service the listener is handling if you have this four information about the listener a client application can connect to the database server okay okay once the connection is established now there will be no communication between the client and the database server through the listener once the connection is established a new server process is created in the database server once it passes the control to the server process the listener no longer deals with the connection and all the work is done by the server process you see directly the user process and the server process are directly communicating only initially till the connection is established we need the oracle net service on both the machines and we need the listener once the connection is established now the user process and the server process can directly communicate okay now we will see what are the various network configuration files we need so we have three important network related files they are listener.ora file tnsnames.ora file sqlnet.ora file these three files are very important for networking okay the first one listener.ora this listener.ora file contains all the network related configuration parameters okay this is present on the database server okay this listener.ora will be present in the database server and it contains all the network related configuration parameters and it is stored in the directory oracle home slash network slash admin so whenever you are looking for this file go to this path and you can find the listener.ora let's see what will be there in the listener.ora file so as we learnt the listener.ora file will have the listener name it will have the protocol used by the listener it will have the host name and it will have the port 
you see the protocol is TCP the host is prod.tcs.com and port is 1521 and we need one more we said four the fourth one is the service name or we can call it as the Oracle system ID this Oracle system ID is used to uniquely identify the database instance in the system okay so if you look at the entire file first we give a listener name and then we configure the address related parameters and then here we define all the services if there are multiple services residing in the same Oracle database you can mention multiple entries here we have a service which is pointing to prod and if you have one more you can add SID underscore description and then you can add one more saying maybe if it is dev you can point it to dev okay remember these four points in order to configure a listener you need four things the protocol the host name the port number and the Oracle system ID okay now let's see what are the various tools we can use to configure the Oracle network we can use the enterprise manager or Oracle net manager or Oracle net configuration assistant or you can use the command line directly to configure the network related parameters okay and obviously if we have a listener running on our Oracle database we need to have some kind of a utility to start stop check the status of the listener and perform some other activities right yes we have a listener utility called LSN RCTL which is used to control the listener this utility is used to start the listener stop the listener check the status of the listener reinitialize the listener from the configuration file parameters and also dynamically configure many listeners and if a password is set you can change the listener password okay in the demo I will show all this functionality so far we talked about listener.ora and we know listener.ora file is present on the database server but what do we need on a client that's a good question right yes that is where we are going in order to connect to a database server all we need is the host name the listener port and the service name if we have that we don't need any file on the client machine you can directly say connect username slash password at the rate the host name where the Oracle database is residing colon the port number where the database service is running slash and the service name of the database you can directly connect using this connection string okay but every time mentioning all these parameters to connect to the Oracle database is a little bit tedious right yes why don't we take all these parameters and put it in a file yes that file is called as tnsnames.ora and obviously this tnsnames.ora file is present in the client machine just like listener.ora is present in the database server tnsnames.ora is present in the client machine okay and this tnsnames.ora will contain all the client side network configuration parameters and you see how an entry in a tnsnames.ora looks here you can give a name you can give whatever name you want if you want to call your database myprod or prod1 or prod10 whatever this name need not be equal to your database name you can give anything and then in the description you have to mention the protocol the listener will be using the host the database is residing and the port number and then the service name okay like this you need to configure the tnsnames.ora in the demo I will show you how to do this okay okay we learnt a lot right we learnt how the Oracle net service helps us in establishing the connection and how the listener plays an important role in establishing the connection and we learnt the important files like listener.ora which is present on the database server and the tnsnames.ora which is present on the client machine
right so now in the next session let's go and check the demo okay